All right, now we are coming to the point where you might be looking at putting some money to paying for advertising. If you put in this much work and effort into putting everything together, then might as well put a little bit of money to advertise it as well. So I'm going to walk you through some things that you should know about when you are setting up a Facebook ad. And I'm gonna show you how to create an audience to target and then just basic general ad setup. I'm not gonna go huge into depth into detail about advertising on Facebook because that is a massive, massive, massive area. I have created hours and hours and hours of video all about uh, doing Facebook advertising alone. Just working in the power editor and with the ads manager can go very in depth and into great, great detail. But for this, I'm not going to go into extreme detail because this isn't a course about setting up ads on Facebook. It's a course about uh, apps and using apps on Facebook to grow your business. So I'm just going to give you a very quick walkthrough, get you started, and so you know what to do for promoting with your Facebook ads. First, we're going to create an audience. Then you are going to make your ad creatives. And the recommended size for your ad creatives are 1,200 by 628. And if you have someone design it for you, you can tell them the image ratio is 1.9 to 1. Text, 90 characters. Headline, 25 characters. Link description, 30 characters. And again, your image may not have more than 20% text. Sometimes I have less than 20% text, but Facebook still nabs me but one way that you can do a test on your things on your images to see if you have 20% text or not I will show you now so if you come to facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash tools forward slash text underscore overlay you will come to the grid tool this is a tool that you can use to tell you if your image might be accepted by Facebook or not Okay, just as an example, I'm just going to use uh, this logo from one of my clients. And normally if it's a logo, they're supposed to allow the logo if there's too much text in the logo, but most of the time they don't. So you have to highlight the areas that has text and then it will show you here. Your image is covered by 24% text, so this one would not be approved. So that's a way that you can test to see if your images have 20% or not before you start running your ads. Now let's take a look at making your audience because if you're going to be uh, paying for ads, you have to know who your ads are going to. So to do that, we set up a Facebook audience. We go to Tools, Audience Insights. And then you get to choose everyone on Facebook, people connected to your page or a custom audience. And it doesn't really matter what you pick here. So we'll just do custom audience. As you can see here, all the options anyway. Pages, people connected to your page, people not connected to a page. So here you can create very in-depth audiences. You can create all sorts of different audiences. How you're going to be doing your targeting and your audience size and all of that really depends on you, depends on your business, depends on the app that you are uh, trying to promote. But I'm just going to walk you through how to create this audience and then how to use it in an ad. So of course you start with a location, country, region, or city. You can even do a city. So if you only want people in a certain city to see your ad, you can do that. Age and gender. Interest is where it starts to get interesting. Now you can, even if I want to say someone interested in, okay, so let's start the Simpsons, just for an example. Look at all these different interests that they have just for the Simpsons. Simpsons, Simpsons movie, list of the Simpsons characters, probably the Simpsons show. They have all the stuff just for when I type in Simpsons. So let's try something else like marketing. So let's just choose marketing just for this example. Right now we have our audience set to all of United States. And we see here our audience is 70 million to 80 million monthly active people in the US. 
that are interested in marketing. Now let's see about people interested. Let's remove marketing. Gary Oldman. So we have 8 million to 9 million monthly active people on Facebook who are interested in Gary Oldman. Oldman, sorry. Now let's try something even more obscure. So let's try red tail, red tail hawk. We have 30,000 to 35,000 people that we could target in America who are interested in the red tail hawk. So as you can see, you can make your targeting pretty specific. Also, you don't have to have just one. I can say people interested in red tail hawks and in the Eagles, American Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles, Golden Eagle. Okay, let's try the Golden Eagle. So people interested in red tail hawks and golden eagles, uh, about the same. So I guess people that like hawks also like eagles. Makes sense. And how about Lord of the Rings? Now, since I have all of these, these are going to show me all the people interested in all of these things. So if I just want to see the people on Facebook interested in one of them, then I delete the other ones. So now the Lord of the Rings, 6 million to 7 million monthly active people. And so you can add as many interests as you want there. If you want to say only people connected to a page or only people not connected to a certain Facebook page, in advanced, you can even get down into behaviors, language, relationship status. So if you want to target all of the single women, you can. If you want to target all the single women from ages 18 to 24, interested in bikinis, We have 2 million to 2.5 million. So there we have single women interested in bikinis. And we can see their education level, 64% college, 2% grad school, job titles, retail, construction. Very interesting. All right. If you are targeting an audience in the US, you can come up here and look uh, page likes and it will show you the page that this audience likes the most, their locations, their activities, their households, and their purchasing. So this can be interesting for a lot of people. After you have created the exact and perfect audience that you want using all of these different many many options and I told you that it goes very in-depth when it comes to Facebook marketing because there's so many different options you can do and ways that you can target and things to target it goes so so far but you know start by creating a couple different audiences all of them different and test your different audiences and then find which ones perform the best so testing is important for advertising on Facebook especially if you have a if you're going to be running a good amount of money, then you want to make sure that your ads are optimized and you're getting the most for your money. So as I was saying, after you have created your audience, you can save your audience by coming up here and then you'll give it an audience name and save it. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and save it so you can see this example, audience name. Your audience bikini list has been saved and now you can see here bikini list is showing up how many active people now it's showing all the information for my bikini list if I make changes I'll have to save it again and I can click here create an ad if you want to use the ad create tool or power editor audience details will be filled out for you uh, go ahead and use the ad create tool now if you made a post about the contest that you would like to boost then you're going to boost this then you're going to use this option 
if you would like to send people directly to the app and click on the link, then you're going to use either this one or this one. Now the difference between these two, send people to your website and increase conversions on your website. This one targets people that like to click on a lot of stuff. So if Facebook thinks that that person is going to see your ad and they're going to click on it and go look at your landing page, they're going to show it to those type of people. Increase conversions on your website. Now Facebook is going to show it more to people that have been known to take action on stuff and fill in their email or download something or do something rather than just click. So I prefer increase conversions on websites for the ads if it is going to be sending people to a link. But if you want, you can give both of them a shot. But as I said, this one targets people more just that click on a lot of things and increase conversions targets people that opt in and convert better than just the people that click. Do not do this. You're not trying to get people to install your app. Installing an app is not what we want. Don't be confused that somehow this has anything to do with the Facebook app that you set up. This has nothing to do with the Facebook app you set up. This is uh, install something like from Google Play or iOS. Uh, I don't know what the Apple Store is, but whatever the Apple Store is and Google Play. Uh, increase engagement in your app. Also, you're not going to want that one. Get video views. If it's a video that you made, then you can use that one. Collect leads for your business. Uh, you will not use this one because this is just a form to collect signups for newsletters or s something like that. But you could do just a single campaign without any app, get leads for your business, and do it as a contest. So the advertisement is actually the contest. It's just one idea throwing it out there for a way you could use the collect leads for your business type of ads on Facebook. So I'll show you what it looks like when you increase, do increase conversions. You'll enter the URL. So you'll put your, the URL to your app as an example. Can't be promoted. Okay. So I better put something that really can be promoted just so I can show you. Okay, so there it is, and choose my conversion pixel. Now before, when you set up your pixel, when I showed you for the conversion pixels how to set one up, then you're gonna choose your conversion pixel there. So I'll just do the pixel for view content. Verify your pixel. You must put your pixel on your page and verify it, and then you can view your audience and budget. So here we can add our bikini list audience that we created. And the reason why I create my audiences there rather than inside of the ad is because you have a lot more control and you have a lot more options and details and insights if you create it in the audience insights rather than create it in the ads manager. That's why I always teach people create your audiences not inside the ads manager but inside of audience insights. And then you get it into your ads manager just by, as you saw me do, I just select it up at the top. You set your budget either daily or start and end date, and you can set your start and end date. Facebook will tell you how much you'll spend. You can optimize by conversions, impressions, clicks to your website, unique reach. Leave it for a conversion since you want people to sign up or opt in. Unless your, if your idea for your ad is different from that, then of course, don't do conversions, but I'm talking for people tracking opt-ins and things that require people to give you the information. You can schedule the ads. After you've scheduled everything, you have it set up for if you want to change it to only show at certain times, run ads on a certain schedule, the delivery type. Uh, this one shows them throughout the day, which is fine. We'll leave it on that. You can hide the advanced options, give your ad set a name, and then choose your creative. If you're boosting a post, you don't have to choose your creative. And now here you have your headline and your text and your call to action. Now your call to action, you can have it sign up, download, donate now, apply now. So whatever your app is related to, you're gonna select the correct call to action. And this is why I like to uh, create ads inside of here rather than just boosting posts is because I can add things like call to actions and stuff inside.
here over here we can see where our ads are going to show up i suggest not showing in the right hand column i suggest not the audience network if you're on instagram and have a presence on instagram you can leave instagram right now instagram ads are pretty cheap so we can leave instagram uh, if you want people on mobile then definitely leave mobile you can get a lot of signups by mobile and definitely leave desktop news feeds so definitely have this one checked and no mobile news feeds checked in instagram if you want up to you mobile news feed even up to you if you want i it depending on the app uh, is depending on if i target mobile or not desktop right hand column i don't think anyone has really reported good results from desktop right hand column all the marketers i talked to they stopped using it because they weren't getting results and my personal experience was the same so i don't recommend using desktop right column but you can try i'm just saying in my personal experience it hasn't worked so well and audience network i think they're still growing it i think they're still trying to get it good because i also haven't had the greatest results from their audience network but it could be changing, it could be getting better, so you can try the audience network. But anyway, you can see how you can easily remove an ad different places where you want your ad to show. You'll see a preview there. As I said, you can change your text and headline. You uh, will definitely have to make sure it's connected to the correct Facebook page right here. If you don't do that, then it might show up on the wrong, wrong page. And after you have looked at everything, you can either review your order or place it, and that's it. And then Facebook is going to take a look at it and see if it's okay, see if it fits their guidelines. Uh, they might check out the contest to see if it also follows the guidelines. So make sure you follow the checklist, like I said before, and took a look at the things to remember about your app section. Because uh, if Facebook checks it out, you don't want them to uh, take it off right after you finish doing all the work. And the last thing I'm going to say about this is some people are a bit confused by the campaign ad set and ad, but basically how it works is just the campaign is the thing that shows your objective and sets the overall setting for your campaign is like exactly what it says. You can have a bunch of different ad sets inside the same campaign. So if I was going to create other ads for this app, I'm going to create them all inside my app campaign. I'm going to keep this app campaign as long as my objective is for conversions. As soon as I change my objectives for conversions, then I need to create a new campaign. So this would be my conversion campaign, and then I would have another campaign for clicks to website. If I wanted to test that out to see how they would do against each other, I can do that. But as long as all of my objectives are conversions, then I can keep them all inside the same campaign, and then just create different ad sets. And then inside of each ad set, you can have different ads. So I could even have 15 ads inside of one ad set that's inside of a campaign, and 10 different ad sets inside of a campaign, and in each ad set, 20 different ads. So you can see one campaign can have 150 million different ads if you wanted. I don't know if anyone has ever been able to do that, but in theory you could do it so this is just a way to keep things organized and to show your objectives audiences budgets and schedules because for the ad sets you can change up your audiences you can change up your budgets and schedules but the campaign you have to keep the same objective for the ads you can change the format and the creative but you have to keep the all the ads inside of one one ad set have to keep the same audience and budget and schedule and so you can see why people will create different ad sets inside of a campaign with different ads inside of each of the ad sets. And again, it's a lot. It's a lot of things to look at and cover, but I hope that by looking at this and watching me walk through one that you will understand a bit more about how to set up a Facebook ad. If you've done Facebook ads before, then you already know what I'm talking about, and this was just a review. Facebook usually takes about a week with a minimum of $10 a day on ads in order for them to start to optimize your ads for conversions. So in the beginning, if you see you're paying like $10 per conversion or something like that, just 
wait and give it a little bit more time because you know I've gone from five dollars per conversion all the way down to 25 cents per conversion so it's a massive massive difference and so it really takes Facebook a bit of time to get the ads optimized to get the audience and everything right especially if you're retargeting retargeting give it a bit of time as well uh, if you are doing a retargeting if you are retargeting in here then that was you can create an ad set under the same campaign and your ad set would be retargeting so let me go back to an ad set so here is my audience and right now I have the saved audience I can do a new audience here's my test one that I made before and it has less than 20 people so those are all the people that have already visited the page so if I'm retargeting people that have already visited the app but they didn't sign up I'm going to include them and then I'm going to exclude because you can see here we can include and exclude after I include the audience of people that have visited the landing page then I'm going to exclude the list of people that visited the thank you page and you can either get the list of people that visited the thank you page by putting a pixel on the thank you page an audience pixel on the thank you page or you can uh, upload all the emails to Facebook when you create your audience when you create your custom audience that's first you have option of website and then under that is option for emails if you want to upload the emails you just click on emails upload the emails and then exclude the opt-ins from the targeting so that means that you're going to retarget all the people that looked at it but not the people that opted in and then you can have an ad that says hey did you forget to join uh, it's not too late look at the great things you can get you know something a follow-up so you can follow up the people that didn't opt in by doing that and excluding the people that opted in uh, another Facebook secret trick for you all right that's about it when it comes to promoting it on Facebook and as I said before use both the paid and the free methods because that's the best way to go